Um, anyway, I love this stuff. So one of the things that I wanted to know was, can I expect an improvement in this kind of technology with the encode and decode engine that you guys have built into Arc? A hundred percent. Obviously, I mean, we've already talked that we support native AV1 encode for the first time. Yeah. So what's the advantage of AV1? Talk to me like I'm five. Okay. AV1 is... Because I still make mistakes about RAM bandwidth and latency, <laughs> so I'm clearly an And you an got idiot. put in your place. I did. Yeah. It's yeah. true. Uh, AV1 is a next generation codec standard, so it, it basically reduces the bandwidth required for a high quality upload. And so if you encode to AV1, you can, you can kind of either push more bits of quality up to the cloud so you can have a higher quality uh, stream, mm -hmm. or you can reduce the bandwidth and kind of maybe reduce some of the jitter, reduce some of the stutter, and it's smaller file sizes if you're if you're recording right. locally. So AV1 is sort of like the future of what is encoding going to look like, and it's supported natively in hardware on all of our GPUs. Now, when you say supported natively in hardware, yes. I think that's something that a lot of people don't understand. It's just because you have hardware support for encoding uh, in a particular manner. That doesn't mean that your quality is as good as if you were to do it through software. Mm -hmm. So, and it also doesn't necessarily mean that it would be fast enough for a real-time application like game streaming. Yeah. Is it that good? It is great. Okay. It is great. And you're going to get to test it, right? You're going to, you're, uh, you're, you're going to basically. Yeah. So there's no point lying. Yeah. I, I mean, I think it's great. <laughs> it's actually, you guys remember QuickSync, right? QuickSync yes. has been awesome for forever. And this is using a lot of the similar media technology. But QuickSync hasn't seen the kind of support that we've seen for That's... other encoders. How, why do you guys, why do you guys suck at propagating QuickSync? Like, I remember we would get these benchmarks in these like weird Chinese like DVD authoring suites, <laughs> and we'd be like, "Why? Why is amazing?" <laughs> and then it takes Apple to go and popularize the concept of hardware encoding, accelerating you know mainstream applications like Final Cut, and all of a sudden everyone goes, "Wow, this is a great idea! Why did Intel suck so much at communicating the importance uh, of QuickSync?" You know, it's hard to put a name on it. I, I blame Ryan. I, well, I, I, I blame Ryan. Time. Why? That doesn't mean I can't blame Ryan. It's I mean, come on. It's sure. Uh, you know, I, I think what it comes down to is like it, it's all about software enabling, developer relations, all that. And Intel has, I, I'll, like, an unparalleled infrastructure for that. the The problem I, I think is that um, there are some complexities of things. In it, it, Quick Sync wasn't always turned on by default when you did a when you made a desktop system right your okay. integrated graphics gets turned off and and developers don't they're like well if, if I, not why, there, why, why am i, why am I to working to, on this project if that's not the case right and i remember we had very specific discussions as we were launching uh uh 10th or 11th gen about the we were you know quick sync is super important we need to tell motherboard vendors you need to leave the default cannot be off anymore the default needs to be that integrated graphics stays on because that's what enables the media engines right. to be accessible and there's no good reason to have right. it off not right. anymore it like, any power, years really. and years ago you might make the case that it was you know compatibility multiple drivers yeah yeah but like when windows handles multiple vendor drivers all the time so if you had an nvidia or radeon card you could still have really all work and, and, and it's it all well fine. integrated or now. an art yeah. card now but well, someday someday, someday. <laughs> Someday soon, and that. But now, when you do that, when you have an Arc card, right? You get you. We can take advantage of both engines, right? So uh, I know Raja has talked about it a little bit. We haven't talked about it recently, but we have. Uh, I think it's called Stream Assist, mm -hmm. which is an idea that if you have an Arc card in your system and you have a a, a CPU with oh. integrated graphics, you can actually use the integrated graphics Quick Sync encode engine to handle all the encode operations. Mm -hmm. And, 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 keep, and keep the offload off right? That's a big problem, actually, particularly when you're running very demanding games. Like, you've probably run into this. You stream. So, yeah, uh, NVENC is amazing. It's uh, outstanding. It's been the industry leader for basically since it was implemented. Yeah. But when you're playing a heavy game and you're trying to encode, you can sometimes run into issues where either the encoder will get overloaded or you will drop significant frames. And a yeah. lot of games these days, we, we've moved away from RTSs mm -hmm. for the most part. So a lot of games these days are GPU bound, not CPU bound. So you run into that a lot. That's actually a pretty cool idea and might be the first genuine example of someone trying to marry <laughs> integrated and discrete graphics. We in spite are of all AMD over that. trying over and over no, and no, over no. and over again. So there's a whole collection of technologies that we have called Deep Link. Yes. And I, I I think we've described Deep Link a little bit, but it's the concept of how can we use all the power of that integrated CPU, which has graphics, 
and now connect Arc Graphics to it. What are the leverages there? And there's lots of them. Right. And it's it's going to become very, very common that you'll see features on Arc that are only activated when it's coupled with an Intel CPU. It's going to be very, yeah, very Stream cool. Assist is one of those. And then um, uh, like Hyper, Hyper Encode. Hyper Encode. Uses the... the uh, the encode engines on the integrated and the encode engines on the discrete arc graphics, and it will I think I think encode it's twice, sixty yeah. you know sixty percent faster, six x faster something like that. Got right it. now, tell me something: Is there a technical limitation that would prevent this quick sync assist from working with an NVIDIA or an AMD card? Because in my humble opinion, it would be a good guy move, and it would be extremely positive press for Intel. Very open standard style. To to get some mind share and some awareness within the streaming community, which, by the way, is really influential. I mean, a great example of this is the recently defunct Artesian builds, which I had never even heard of. <laughs> I had no idea they existed until they screwed over a small streamer with a prize, went absolutely supernova. Uh, Steve from Gamers Nexus has it. actually talked I saw it. a lot about Artesian builds. And, <laughs> and, and we all discovered that they were actually running an enormous operation. What, they have like 40 employees, 60 employees or something like that? that? Apparently, oh. I don't know, the, the last video is something like $20 million business yeah like they were running yeah, a, this big, enormous yeah. operation their only way they marketed as far as i could tell was Twitch. streaming building mm -hmm. machines and then sponsoring as many tiny streamers as they could with these with these gaming rigs and and they turned it into this enormous freaking business so wow. if i can if i can put pressure on you guys in a very public forum uh we've got <laughs> almost twenty thousand people watching right now by the way say wow. hi hi twenty thousand uh, people thank you guys very much for tuning in i would like to see intel try to take a very open approach to their technology because if i was a streamer and all i ever knew was GeForce, or all I ever knew was Radeon, which is less common in the streaming space because of NVENC, if all of a sudden you guys were to get your foot in the door and go, hey, you probably already have an Intel CPU. We have this really great feature that you're gonna like that is gonna save you from those encoding overload errors. It's gonna save you from any kind of, kind of FPS drop when you're, uh, when you're running a particularly demanding game. Mm -hmm. um, all of a sudden, they're sitting there going, okay, I'm using this Intel branded technology. It's helping me with my game streaming. And I think in terms of mindshare, that could be extremely helpful. I think that's a fair point. Let, let us go look at that. And I actually, I'm not going to say it already, but I think it may work. But I, I think we need to go look at it because what's I think happening is most of those GPUs are turned off in the bias. Mm -hmm. But uh, but we can take it and go, look, I'll, I'll give you an update. Okay, yeah. I mean, it's just, it's one of those things where I'm thinking about this, not from an Intel needs to market better standpoint necessarily. That's my pitch to you guys. Yeah. But from a, hey, I want technology to work better yeah. standpoint. It's it's a very fair request. It is. And it is. And, and, and and yeah, and, and you know what? Honestly, there's nothing that offends me more than being treated like I'm not a good enough customer. Um, when I bought my AirPods Pro, Apple basically said, well, f*** you. You don't need a battery meter. You have an Android. I saw um, you reaching for it. You don't need to you don't need to be able to update your firmware because you didn't buy enough Apple products. You can only update your firmware with this thing with an iPhone. Is that right? That is correct. You cannot update the firmware by plugging in a, a lightning port and plugging mm. it into mm. a PC, PC right? through iTunes or whatever. They did not create a way to do that. And they did that because I am not worthy enough. I didn't buy enough Apple products and I don't like it. I think it's arrogant and I think it's extremely so anti-consumer. To move back from Apple, uh, I, I, some... I think you're worthy. I want you to I know that I think you're worthy. Too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Your whole family loves you. Yeah. I'm good enough, uh, and I'm, I'm smart enough. enough and gosh darn it, people like me. There's an old reference. <laughs> Uh, three pin power connector, three pin connector next to the power connectors. Yep. Uh, yes. Uh, oh, are on... you able to talk about that? Yeah, yeah it's fine. Uh, this three pin sure. connector on the card is the Can you uh, show it to cable. The uh, maybe they're uh, not really going to be There's, yeah. there's, there's a small home. three pin connect. We can't see it. It's, it's too fine. dark. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> that is the USB oh. connection to Ooh, uh, control the RGBs. Yeah. yeah. So, you, the, the, so. The, it will come with, actually, here, it will come with this cable. Right, that connects yeah. there. Now, I noticed that's in, a super weird it's USB, a USB cable. USB header. Yes, it goes uh, to it a header on a motherboard. It doesn't have all four pins in it. You don't need four. Really? Yeah, because the card has already got power. Oh, it's power. already got power. Yeah. 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 I've never seen anybody do that, though. Even well, on a powered device, that is a super yeah, weird implementation. It is. We are weird. We're weird dudes, man. <laughs> we're weird dudes. We do weird things. <laughs> Get used to it. I'm smart enough. <laughs> and people like me, damn it. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, Mr. Smalley. The quote, the quote was close.